sky so blue and this could be my lucky day roll them dice spin that wheel you're gonna see a whole new deal cause this could be my lucky day Which one? Now think sexy. Well, if you're after sexy, I would stop right there. No, not that sexy. Well, sexy, you have to look to work for a curry agency. I am going to an audition, Jack. Just want to pull out all the stops, huh? Honey, you're a great actress. I don't think you have to run around half naked to get a part. Yeah, well, it doesn't seem to matter how good an audition I give. I am not getting a break. They told me not to marry an actress because the drama never stops at the stage door. What is that supposed to mean? It means I want you to relax. Have faith in yourself. You get a part soon. Yeah, well, I have lost the last six parts I tried out for. My career has ground to a halt. Honey, it's a tough business. You know that. Just keep on trying. Oh, God, you know what? You don't even understand, Jack. I don't understand? Because I'm only an accountant, is that it? I got a novel in there that is half finished. It's not getting written because I got to put on a damn suit every day and get out there and make sense of other people's screwed up finances. Well, quite frankly, our finances are almost non-existent. Yeah, well, nobody's stopping you from writing. Just the 50 hours a week I have to put in the office, and the fact when I come home, I hardly see straight. Yeah, well, I work too. Part-time job at a courier agency barely takes care of the phone bill. That is not fair. You know what? The next time you start feeling sorry for yourself, remember you're not the only one who's feeling frustrated here. Oh, come on, Jack. I see you at dinner. This day's starting off well. Ugh. Let me confirm that, sir. Pick up 505 Madison Ave, Suite 5, package going to 767 3rd Avenue, Suite 1209. That'll be 40 minutes. Thank you. Bad day to come in late, girl. The phones have been lit up like my Uncle George at a Christmas party. I'm sorry, Claire. I can't catch a break today. Hey, gorgeous. Hey! How's Cheryl Lennox on gift to Broadway this morning, eh? Well, I got an audition this afternoon, so I am very nervous. Oh, come on. A director would be crazy not to choose you. I keep telling you, you looked like Frida A. Worth when she did Gilda. <laughs> you are going to be a big star, kid. Yeah, well, I wish there were a few more directors out there who felt the same way you do, hmm? What's with you today, anyway? You look different. I am different. I woke up this morning and I had the feeling. First time since Evelyn died. You know, Bill, I don't think I want to hear about this. No, 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 I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about the feeling, like, like, like today's my lucky day. Every time that feeling came on, something good always happened. We, we get a check in the mail or, or Evelyn buy a lottery ticket and we win a few bucks. But there was always something good coming. I've already bought my lottery ticket for today's draw. Oh. It's going to be a big one. They haven't had a win in six weeks, and it's up to 13.5 mil. Wow. That'll be some nice Christmas yeah, Tell present. me about it. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Nora, you and Jack, well, you've been the closest thing to family I've had in the last couple of years. So whatever I win, you're going to see a piece of it. <laughs> well, forgive me if I don't hold my breath, huh? Oh, uh, yeah. You go ahead and laugh. But you know what? I think you should touch my sleeve. Maybe some of my good luck will rub off on you and your audition today. All right. <laughs> oh, yeah, I feel lucky. Oh, <laughs> this is going to be one sweet. I told you so good looking. <laughs> hey, Mr. Lucky, here are your morning deliveries. Shouldn't be too tough a schlap if everything's midtown. Well, lucky me. Hey, see what I'm telling you? It's starting already. Keep smiling, gorgeous. 
I've listened to that man's whistling every time he leaves the office for the last 10 years. You would think he would update his songs by now. Well, hey, I like those old show tunes. Anyways, Irish, Italian, very theatrical. That's why we love him. Maybe that's why you love him. <laughs> Aerolytic Express Messengers, how can I help you? When did you think it was over, Alec? No, help me out here, because I really want to know. Did you wake up one day and that was it? Or was it more gradual? I just wasn't so charming or flawless or young anymore. Hmm? Because I know exactly when I stopped loving you. Like one of those moments when the world's caught in a flash of lightning and the image is seared onto your brain. I remember walking through that door, putting down my bags and looking in your eyes. Well, of course, I didn't know her name right then. But I saw her there just the same. You weren't even looking at me anymore. Oh, wow. Bravo. Excellent performance. I'm sure it would wow moms and pops at dinner theaters all over the suburbs. But uh, you see, what we require here is a professional. One with subtlety, intelligence, and training. Make a note of that. Would somebody here please just make a note of that so that I don't have to waste any more of my life listening to this? Well, next. Hey, you know what? That was not a dinner theater performance. I know this part and I have worked very hard on it. Well, obviously not hard enough. Look, I haven't worked with you before, so I don't know what your problem is, but I saw your last two plays, and may I respectfully suggest you deal with it instead of dumping on other people's talent and hard work? Thank you so much for your time. Next. Oh, unbelievable. Oh, there goes my acting career. My name's Christine. Somebody had to tell him. Last time I auditioned for him, he told me I'd be perfect if you were casting a bad biker movie. <laughs> Look, once what you did gets around, they will probably give you an award. Why do we do this to ourselves, Kristen? Why? It's showbiz, girl. <laughs> for the glamour, of course. <laughs> hey, you wanna grab a coffee? Oh, I'd love to, but I can't. I wanna go home and make something special for Jack tonight. My nerves kinda got the better of me this morning. And he got the worst. Yeah, something like that. Anyway, I want to make it up to him. Next! <laughs> Let's, Let's get, get out of here. Forget him. About. I told you this was going to be my lucky day, and it was. Only bigger than I figured. So you finally got the lady in 216 to go out with you, huh? Oh, come on. It's bigger than that. Uh, I'm being serious, Nora. Well, tell me. What is it? No, I want to tell you in person. You won some money on the lottery, didn't you? Uh-uh. I'm not saying anything else. I want to see your face when I tell you. Listen, how about I come over for dinner, huh? Uh, Bill... You know, I don't think that's such a great idea. Oh, come on. I, I, I promise I won't stay long. And I'll bring the wine. I really have to celebrate this with you. All right, then. Come on over. Hope you like penne out of piatta. Well, I prefer pasta, but listen, hey, anything you're making, that's fine with me. And <laughs> or whatever we eat. Make sure you got a chair behind you, because when I tell you my news, it's going to knock you right off your feet. So you really did win big, huh? Big? Listen, on my way home, I'm going to stop at the cafe on 28th, and I'm going to lay down a bed or two. After what happened today, I don't need another win, but listen. When you're running this hot, when I keep it rolling, right? I guess. Now you got me really curious. I want to hear this. Uh-uh, you're going to have to be patient. Listen, I only got a couple more deliveries, and then I'll be over, OK? Uh, about 7 o'clock. Uh, bye, gorgeous. All right, bye. OK. Oh, man, oh, man. Oh. 
Thanks, Evelyn. dinner ready. Look, I hope there's nothing wrong. Call me if you get this, okay? Bye. Hey, sweetheart. I was getting worried about you. Stop by workshop, Don. I couldn't catch a cab in the rain. Oh, God, you're soaking wet. Here, let me, let me just take this, huh? Got it. Ew. Oh, sweetheart, look. I'm really sorry about this morning. I, uh, I was just so nervous about my audition, and when I got there, I practically ripped the guy's head off. So, uh, needless to say, I don't think I got the job. You okay? Walking 20 blocks in the rain took the edge of my enthusiasm. Ah, yeah. Well, look, I made us a really nice dinner. We're having penne arrebiata. Oh, romantic dinner for three? Yeah. Well, uh, I, I set a place for Bill. <sighs> look, apparently something really big happened, and he wanted to come over and tell me. I promise I won't let him stay long. It's fine. What's the matter, Jack? Nothing. Too much work. Too much stress, I guess. All right, then. I'll tell you what. We are not going to wait for Bill. Tonight, there are no audits, no phone calls, no responsibilities. Besides, complimenting the chef, of course. So please take a seat, sir. Dinner will be served shortly. Messengers and a rocket car or two. Have you seen Bill yet this morning? That's part of the problem. Hasn't shown up yet. You tried his place? No answer. Been trying since seven. Yeah, I've been trying too. You know he didn't turn up to dinner last night? I've been working here ten years and he hasn't missed a day that I've seen. I mean, I don't know what it would take to put him out of action or, or to miss a meal. No, neither do I. Aerolytic Express Messengers, how can I help you? Normally I wouldn't do this, Nora. But seeing as you're pretty well family to Bill, I figure it's okay. I really appreciate it, thank you. And he didn't pick up his newspaper either. I'm telling you, I don't think he came back last night at all. I didn't see him. Plus, he usually stops in and takes old Mrs. Klinger's Shih Tzu out for a walk before he turns in, and he never showed up. You know, he didn't turn up to work, and he hasn't checked in. Now, I'm getting really worried about him. Is there anybody else he might have stayed with? Lady, you're the closest thing he's got to family I've seen. If you don't know where he is, I don't know who would. Oh, boy. What about this? Nope. It's worth. I hope the old guy's okay. He's got a good heart. 
Always helping someone. Not a whole lot left like him. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. Look, I realize that he hasn't been gone very long. It's just that it's not like him. I mean, this is a guy who hasn't missed a day of work in years, and he never showed up to his apartment last night or this morning. Your friend uh, a drinker? Yeah, he has a drink now and then. But he's not a drunk. No, uh, you said he thought this was his lucky day, right? So maybe he did win a few bucks, and he decided to celebrate. No. It's just not Bill. Maybe he met a lady, and he's still celebrating. <laughs> Detective, he's almost 70 years old. Well, men still celebrate at that age. Uh, so I'm told. You're not even beginning to take this seriously, are you? No, what I think is you're taking it too seriously. Look. He's my friend, and he said that he was on his way over to my apartment to celebrate with me and my husband, and he never showed up, and he didn't go home. Look, ma'am, ma'am, I told you I can't take a report yet. You know, uh, after 48 hours elapses, then you give me a call and we'll take action, okay? Okay. Mm. In the meantime, you might want to try a few things to find him yourself. Like, um, figuring out who was the last person to see him yesterday. Would you know who that would be? Well, nobody at his apartment. Ah. Might have been one of his deliveries. Ah, there you go. You see? Maybe one of those people remembers something he said about where he was going, what he was doing, you know? Yeah, thanks, Detective. I'll give it a try. Oh, and, uh, Ms. Uh, Barkin? Mm-hmm. You know, I would keep it low-key, huh? I mean, he's only gone for a night, you know? You don't want to alarm people. And what if something did happen to him? Well, no, if something did happen to him, well, that's a whole different ball game now. Then it's my job. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, OK. Hey, Marinello. Nice to see the flakes wind up at your desk for once. Oh, yeah? Who said she's a flake? When someone comes to us to track down dinner guests, I do. Well, maybe this dinner guest is really in trouble. <laughs> Keep your mind open. You might even learn how to solve a case one day. Yeah. Hey, thanks for the advice. <laughs> turning into a major crime scene? Jack, this is not just dinner. He has disappeared. He never came to work this morning, and he didn't go home last night. That's not our problem. He's our friend. Of course it's our problem. Well, he must have family somewhere. <sighs> we are all he's got. You know that. Jack, I just asked the police to look into his disappearance. Why are you making such a big deal out of this? I'm not. I, I just think they're busy people. You just can't walk in there and treat the police like some lost and found. You're gonna look stupid. What, I'm stupid to care about a friend? I didn't say that. Oh, so caring about a friend isn't stupid, it's just me that's stupid. I didn't say that either. You know what? You can be very insensitive. And you're not being sensible, calling out the Marines because some guy blew up a dinner engagement. Oh, honey, I didn't mean to upset you. Yeah, well, for somebody who isn't trying, you're doing a very good job. Look, he'll turn up. Can you see anything that could keep that old guy down? I just don't want you to go off on some wild goose chase when the guy's probably just fine. He wouldn't want you to worry either, you know that. Tell you what, why don't you choose a wine while I finish up here? Jack has a point? Bill has a 
has no one else in the world to worry about him. And I'm supposed to beat myself up for caring? I don't think so. Look, I'm just saying, things are tense between the two of you. And you obsessing about Bill is the last thing your relationship needs. I am not obsessing. This isn't about our relationship. This is about Bill. OK, I know. You're right. There's nothing you can do about it right now anyway. The police aren't getting involved. Well, the detective I spoke to said I should follow up on my own. Oh, right. I hate to break this to you, but you're an actress, not a private detective. Yeah, well, I played one three years ago, did a ton of research. Fabulous reviews. <laughs> yeah, and I researched being the Queen of France. Doesn't mean they gave me no crown. All I'm gonna do is look up the people Bill might have seen the day he disappeared and ask him a few questions. Oh, like what? Excuse me, my friend vanished into thin air. Did he tell you he was thinking of vanishing and... Isn't funny, Kristen. <laughs> That's what they said at my audition for Little Murders at the Schubert. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Bill said he was right about his lucky day and that he'd won big. Uh, the lottery? How much? I don't know, just big. No, just because he said it. He also said it was my lucky day. And guess what? Remember that audition I did? The director phoned. I got a call back. Oh, please. That was talent, not luck. Mm. Look, Bill said that he had a lucky feeling, and I think he won. OK, so say he won. So what? Well, you know how Bill loves to talk? He was so excited. Maybe he talked about it to the wrong person. Oh, uh, hold on. I don't like where this is going. So you're saying someone did something to him to get a lottery ticket? It's possible. If Bill was OK, he'd have been at my place the other night, and he'd have been at work the next morning. At the very least, he would have called me, right? What are you planning to do? Well, I put together a list of the deliveries Bill made on Monday afternoon. I'm going to go visit them one by one and try to get a feel for who you might have talked to about it being his lucky day. Nora, if you're right about this, the person you're looking to find might be some psycho freak killer. I mean, has that had any impact on you at all? Yes, the thought had crossed my mind, but I think I can get what I need without setting off any alarm bells. Oh, really? Well, that's the theory, anyway. I guess I'm going to find out how good an actor I really am, huh? This may seem like a really odd question, but my dad is a courier, and he made a delivery here Monday afternoon, and, well, he's getting very forgetful. So when he got home, he wasn't wearing his cap, and he thought that he maybe left it here? Sorry, but nobody turned in anything like that. You sure? It was a Derek Jeter souvenir? I straighten up here every night at closing. If it was here, I'd have known about it. Look, I know you're really busy, and I don't mean to bother you. Uh, it's just my sister gave him this cap last Christmas, and if she finds out he's lost it, she's going to go crazy. Maybe if you could remember whether or not he was wearing it when he came in, I might be able to figure out at what point in the day he lost it. Have I seen you somewhere before? Uh, no, I don't think so. I, I mean, not like this, but are you, like, on television or something? You an actor? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm an actor. Well, yeah, I know. On stage last year, off-Broadway, Driven by the Rain. My God, you saw that? Yeah, it was a really weird play, but you were really good. <laughs> yeah, well, that was a tough one. Boy, did the writing suck. But the cast was very good. Wow. I, it's not every day we get a real-life celebrity here. Well, hardly. So, uh, do you think you remember him? We get a lot of messengers in here. Uh, what did your dad look like? Uh, he's five foot six, graying hair. Whistles, always show tunes. Hey, I remember that guy. Yeah, he's been in here a couple times. Came in here mid-afternoon, dropped off some documents from the courthouse. But to tell you the truth, I can't remember if he had a hat on or... Well, uh, did you talk to him at all? Uh, no, I was on the phone when he came in, just signed the receipts, and then he left. And could anyone else have talked to him? No, door to my desk and then out. OK. Well, thank you anyway. Well, it was really nice to meet you. Thank Listen, you. Listen, could I get your autograph? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I hope you find the hat. You're always welcome to come back and might turn up. 
<laughs> That's very kind of you. Thank you. Thank you. Hymns, getting kicked out of another two offices and nearly having to buy a squeaky clean used low mileage car a success then no girl why don't you just go home oh i don't know i think i'll try a couple more on the way home way home but of course bill said he was going to his bookmaker on the way home now who better to tell about how lucky he felt right bookmakers okay that is not a good idea yeah and who better to try and steal someone's lottery ticket your butt in the trunk of her car for sticking her nose where it don't belong. Hey, forget about it. <laughs> don't worry, I'll be careful. Nora, I can't stop you from doing this, but you definitely can't stop me from worrying either. One more stop and then I'm going home. I'll call you later, okay? Oh, and Kristen? What? Thanks for worrying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Signal, Terry and me go in the front. Unit two, cover the alley. You got it. Oh, man. Did you put mustard on my sandwich? You said you wanted mustard on my sandwich. I didn't ask for mustard. Why would I ask for mustard? I hate mustard. Check it out. What do you figure that's all about? I don't know. But whatever she's doing, we don't need it right now. Hi there. I, um... I was hoping you might be able to help me with something. Depends. Well, my dad came in here on Monday afternoon, and I was wondering if you might have seen him. Well, a lot of guys come by here, lady. Yeah, well, his name is Bill Regan. A lot of guys don't introduce themselves. Well, he's about five foot six, graying hair. Oh, you just described about half the guys who come in here. <laughs> yeah, well, well uh, oh, oh, also, he whistles. He comes in here a lot. Oh. I'm sorry, lady. Don't turn away from me. I'm talking to you. This is important. Look, uh, my family is really worried. I just need to know if you've seen him. Please? You think he's a tip off? Feel a whole lot better if we made our move five minutes ago. Stop the stick. Nobody saw your father. Nobody knows anything about him. All right. What the hell is 
this now? That's our chip. about anything. Right. And that's how come you started training for the Olympic hurdles when Detective Miller was trying to question you? Well, how am I supposed to know he's a detective? Look, no offense, but he looks more like something out of the road company version of wise guys than a cop. And he could have identified himself. Oh, well, consider me identified. Now, how about telling us what you were doing in that betting parlor? I was looking for a friend. A pretty girl like you has to look for friends in a place like that? No, that is not what I meant. A friend of mine disappeared a couple of days ago. So what? You started making bets about what happened to him? No. The detective I talked to suggested that I go to the places he may have visited the day he disappeared and, and figure out who was the last person to talk to him. Which detective? Well, detect... Uh, oh, Marinello. Detective Marinello. He works here. Well, the last thing my friend said is that he was going there to place a bet. You want to tell Marinello to get over here now? Sure. You can get out of here if you want. What's going on? You know her? Yeah, she uh, stopped by yesterday and I'm missing persons. Yeah, well, following your advice, three months of work on a bookmaking operation just got blown off when she walked into the shop. I didn't advise her to go in there. What are you talking about? That's not what she says. And that's not what's going in my report. I'll leave you two to get reacquainted. Oh, look, I'm really sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean to get you into trouble. I'll survive. What the hell were you doing in that place? Well, it's... It's just I remembered Bill told me that that's where he was going on his way to my place, and, and I, I wanted to ask if they'd seen him. All right. So you asked around, right? Mm. Now you're finished. Well, I don't know. Guess that depends if we find Bill, huh? We? Hey, Miss Barkin, you're not getting it here now. Come on. I am not going to sit at home and wait while my friend is out there somewhere, hurt or, or worse, with nobody trying to help him. Look, I'll, I'll prepare a report on your friend if he doesn't show up by morning. But as of now... You're no longer in the detective business. You understand that? No, the only thing that I understand is my friend is missing, and so far, nobody's doing a damn thing about it. Am I free to go? Oh, please. Well, thank you. I to say, I come home, you're not here. There's no message, no call, nothing. And when you finally call, you're at the police station. Well, it was just a misunderstanding. 
But which wouldn't have happened if you hadn't been sticking your nose into something the police should be handling. Yeah, well, they're not. Nobody is except me, and Bill is still missing. I don't want to hear it. Nora, I'm busting my chops every day out there trying to stay ahead of the credit card companies and you running around aggravating the police department. I'm just worried about Bill. Well, worry about us for a change. Nora, I think you're mixing up your priorities big time here. That is not fair. Oh, funny, that's what I keep saying. I remember the times when the two of us were all we worried about. You know, the big plans that we had? How we're gonna work together? How we're gonna make it all happen? Look, nothing has changed. Those plans are still there. I don't know. I have to get some writing done. Keep up my part of the plan. This is choice. You stir up a nest of seasoned criminals, the police tell you to stop, Jack tells you to stop, and here you are planning to get right back into trouble. Well, what do you want me to do? Just give up? Given what's happened so far, that's not a bad idea. Nora, Bill might be missing, but you're gonna wind up in the hospital, or worse. So I'll be more careful. Don't say that. To be more careful suggests that you're not being careful in the first place. What you're being is reckless. Okay, so I'll be less reckless then. I'm not gonna win this, am I? Nora, this is real life. It's not a play. I'm going to do this. I have two more places to go, and then my detective career's history, okay? I'll see you later. insurance no he's not here right now can I take a message uh-huh yeah okay got it bye hi 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 I wondered if you could help me with something that's what I'm here for <laughs> my dad is a courier and he delivered a package to your office Monday afternoon and somewhere along the way he lost his favorite cap I was hold please I was just wondering if maybe he'd left it here or if you'd remember him wearing it when he came in. Refresh my memory. What's he look like? He's five foot six, uh, graying hair, very talkative. Um, well, if he'd started, you wouldn't have been able to shut him up. <laughs> and, uh, oh, also, he whistles. Oh, yeah, the whistler. Uh-huh. I remember him. He's a really sweet guy. I don't remember the cap, though. Anyway, the guy he was talking to isn't here right now, but he might remember. So he's talking to someone? Yeah. Uh, are you still holding? I'll, I'll put you through. Yes, the package he brought in was data for the accountant who's working on the audit with Mr. Moore. Oh. 
Your dad got all excited when he found out the guy was here, so I sent him back to talk to him. An accountant? Yeah, he's with Lyons and Becker. Oh, uh, do you remember the name of this accountant? Yeah, I do. He was pretty cute. Half the girls in the office had him scoped out five minutes after he cleared the door. <laughs> His name's Jack Barkin. Uh, so they talked, um, my, uh, my dad and this, uh, Jack Barkin? Yeah. Your dad said he had something important to tell him, so I sent him right back there. They were there for a while, so I guess they talked. Penny, have you seen the Universal Life annuity payout schedule for last month? No, I haven't. But I am going to go and check in the, uh... Files. Files, right. OK. Um, oh, this is Mr. Moore. Jack Barkin was doing the audit with him, so he might be able to help you. Good luck. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> you, uh, you know Jack? Well, actually, I'm his wife. Oh, well, uh, this is a surprise. Um, how can I help you? I just had a question about when Jack was working here the other day. You see, a friend of ours is a courier, and he made a delivery here that day, and I was just wondering if he'd left his cap here. Couriers usually don't get past reception. No, I know. It's just your receptionist said that he went in the back. Yeah. Yeah, I think I do remember a guy going back to where Jack was working. An older guy, I think. Uh-huh. What did your husband say? Well, I haven't been able to talk to him about it yet, but I will. Thank you. Hey, buddy. Go. Go. Go along. Well, go get it, Jerry. We don't get all day. Dude, you find a girlfriend? <laughs> you sure you're okay for this? Well, they could try your husband again. Maybe he's home. No, no, let's just do this, all right? It's very touching, but it's just way too late. Look, I know you're angry because we were looking for your friend sooner. You weren't looking for him at all. The coroner says he's been dead at least 48 hours. Well, what happened? The coroner says there were no outward signs of trauma. He looks like a heart attack. And what will they know for sure? Well, if it was his heart, there'd be no reason for an autopsy. What? Miss Barkin, he was an elderly man who'd just been walking up and down stairs all day. I mean, there's no suspected foul play here. No, that man was as healthy as a horse. Oh, come on. Let's get out of here. Come on, come on. Please. What about the ticket? Did you find his ticket? I too. Look, when I talked to him that morning, he said it was his lucky day. He bought a lottery ticket, and then he called me later to tell me that he was right. Look, I told you he was coming by my place that evening to fill me in on his good luck. There was no ticket. Don't you think that that might be reason enough to believe that he was robbed and, th and then murdered for it? When we found Bill, his wallet was still in his pocket, and he still had some money in it. And he was still wearing his watch and his ring. That doesn't sound like a robbery to me. Yeah, well, I think that somebody knew about his lottery win and stole it from him. All right. How much did he say he won? <sighs> well, he didn't, exactly. He didn't say? No. And you expect me to open a homicide investigation based on the suggestion that he might have had a winning lottery ticket? And you don't know how much it was for? Or if he cashed it? Or if someone else knew about it? I think that somebody did know about it. Listen, 
I feel for you losing your friend like this. But I have a board full of real homicides with real victims and real motives waiting for me back at the office. Now, if you can think of anything that would support your theory, I'll be glad to hear it. Otherwise, I don't have time to, to investigate every accidental death that comes by the precinct. We done here. Do me a favor, will you? Ask the coroner to do a once-over on Bill Regan's body. It's natural causes. Hmm. Tell him to look at it again, will you? Got some new information. Am I missing something here? When did this woman start to become credible? When the guy she was worried about ended up in that cooler. In my book, that's credible. Enough to open an investigation? We'll see. We'll see after the autopsy comes back. We're investigating, aren't we? I know we are. I can tell. Maybe downtown or something? No, what are you getting at? I'm... I'm just trying to put some pieces together, that's all. Honey, you've been through a lot. Why don't you sit down and fix your drink? He said he didn't see Bill that day. And the guy at the insurance company said he did. Well, what am I supposed to do? Accuse him of lying? Maybe he forgot. Being the last person to see a friend on the day he died isn't exactly the kind of thing that just slipped somebody's mind. I mean, there's gotta be a reason he didn't tell you he saw Bill. Come yeah, on. I know, I know you're right. You know, that night he came home late and he was soaking wet. When I asked him where he'd been, he said he had to walk home because he couldn't get a cab in the rain. <laughs> What is going on, Kristen? I don't know. But if the police do decide to investigate, they could easily put the facts together, and that could make trouble. Well, like what? Well, if Jack was the last person to see Bill alive, did Bill tell him about the lottery ticket? Probably. So Bill crosses through the park, and he dies, or is murdered. If he's murdered, whoever did it knows exactly what they were looking for. Kristen, this is my husband we're talking about. Yeah, but if Bill was killed, the killer was probably waiting for him, who came home late and was soaking wet. Oh, my God. Laura, I'm sorry. This is crazy. I'm treating this like some dumb murder mystery I'm auditioning for. I shouldn't be saying these things. What am I gonna do? Talk to Jack. What else can you do? Okay. Uh, hello, is uh, Jack Bark in there, please? Oh, when will he be back? Uh, this is his wife calling. It's important that I speak with my husband. Uh, do you know where he's going? Oh, okay. Thank you. Come on. No, 
you're absolutely right, Kristen. I have to talk to Jack. I have to give him a chance to explain himself. Good. Look, I'll catch up with you later, all right? All right. Then again, he might have a few other things to explain while he's at it. about back there. What are you talking about? You saw her, she's all over him. Come on, we saw two people having lunch. Let's not turn this into some kind of soap opera. It's all lies, Kristen. First about not having met with Bill, and now he's seeing another woman. I mean, all the time he says he's spending at the library doing research on his novel, or, or, or writing in coffee shops. What, is he spending it with her? Nora, stop it. I mean, what we just saw doesn't prove anything. You gotta find out the truth before you start throwing away your marriage. Yeah. Yeah, well, that is exactly what I'm going to do. What, are you going out? Yeah, I'm gonna work at the library. Well, you could work here. You know what? I gotta do some research. Jack, I was really hoping that we could talk. I won't be late. Maybe when I get back. God, I'm really beginning to hate that novel. Nora, don't do this. If I don't keep up the momentum now, I'm gonna lose it all together. I just want us to be together tonight. It is important. Well, there were plenty of nights when I was sitting at home and you were at drama classes and rehearsals, and those were very important too, right? Jack, do you still love me? What is that supposed to mean? What I said, I need to know if you still love me. Of course I do. Look, I'll talk to you later. her unease at their current arrangement. An arrangement, not a marriage. That's how he thought of it now. If he thought of it at all. Carrie's unease was okay, though. He had plenty of his own to deal with. Just that morning, she'd come at him again, prattling on about the men who disappeared last night. He told her it was something the police should be handling. But they're not handling it, she whined. And we're all he's got. Sooner or later, she'd find out how Kevin had really disappeared. And that's what Tony would have to take swift and final action. <sighs> Tony turned the full force of his anger on her. I'm busting my chops every day. You're trying to stay out of the credit card companies, and you're running around aggravating the police department. She didn't get it. Why was he making such a big deal out of her trying to solve her friend's disappearance? Worry about us for a change, Tony said, because I think you're mixing up. Mixing up your priorities big time. <laughs> he had a smile inwardly at that. It was, it was just, just a matter of time until she, she lost her life as well. As well? And that's when it would all make sense. He'd have all the money, and he'd have Danielle. Greed and lust both fulfilled with just the squeeze of a trigger. Not that hard. Hey, 
Kristen, what is it? Hey, is Jack here? No, why? You have to see this. You're not gonna believe it. <clears throat> Sandra Keel got lucky with her 13th. Wait a minute, isn't that her? Isn't that the woman Jack was with? Yeah. Oh my God. Greed and lust. Both fulfilled with just the squeeze of a trigger. Well, what are you talking about? What is it? I went into Jack's computer and I read some of his novel. All of this is in it. What? The main character kills his wife's friend and then plans to kill his wife. Oh, and Kristen, all the dialogue is from our private conversations, things that we actually said to one another. Oh, my God. Got to admit, that's pretty twisted. <laughs> you know, we used to say that there was a law against keeping secrets, that whatever we were thinking about, we had to share with one another, you know, like hopes, ideas, dreams, whatever. And now it's like Jack is somebody else. The person that I have spent the last five years of my life with doesn't even exist. <laughs> How did it get like this? Listen, I don't know what to say to you. But if I could see inside people's heads, maybe my last three relationships might have made more sense. <laughs> to it. Hell of a freaky break. Uh, who knows what could have gone down if your friend hadn't noticed. Yeah, I know. <sighs> Look, how does something like that happen anyway? Old pipes. Maybe the joint got brittle and something shifted. Inside the ceiling? And uh, these old buildings are still settling. Freaky it happening right over the light fixture, though. If someone would have been in here when the light was turned on, they would have come out extra crispy. Would you be able to tell if that pipe had been tampered with? Lady, I fix plumbing. I'm not a cop. Anyway, why would someone screw around with the plumbing like that? I'm not kidding here. Somebody could have wound up dead. Thank you. Thanks very much. Ms. Barker. Hi. I didn't expect to see you again. Look, I've come to ask you. No, I've come to beg you to please investigate Bill Regan's murder. Look, we've already been through this. Yeah, I know. Look, there's a lady in the paper today, okay? Apparently, she won Monday's lottery. Okay. But you came all the way down here to tell me that? The ticket that she cashed in was Bill's ticket. Really? Yeah. Can you at least tell me what connection she had to Mr. Regan? And how she got his ticket? Oh, Look. All right. I know that this sounds weird, OK? And you think I'm a crazy actress trying to make some big drama out of this whole thing, but... I just need you to investigate this woman, please. Look, uh, I'll do what I can.
There's one that fell out of the cuckoo's nest, right on her head. Danny, call downtown. See if they finished the autopsy on Bill Regan. You're buying her story? Nah, let's just say I'm shopping, OK? All right. And see what you can turn up on this woman who won the lottery today, uh, Sandra Keel. All right. Hey, Doc Hogan, how are you? Good. Listen, need more on the uh, Regan autopsy. Really? All right. Great, thanks. Well, what do you know? The coroner says they don't have a definitive answer on the autopsy, but he's found enough to think it's suspicious. He's ordered a full workup. All right. Where are you going? Well, I think I'm gonna try and guess uh, who saw Bill Regan last. Right. Don't you people ever give up? You raid my club, you don't find nothing. Now you drag me down in a bogus homicide rap? You know you're right. Babe in the woods like you, you're like a poster boy for persecution. Well, now you're getting it. Mm. See, you should listen to your partner. Yeah, he's just getting warmed up. He's got a lot more to say about how Bill Regan was a regular in your betting parlor. Social club. I got a lot of regulars. Yeah, a couple of whom got their knees broken last month because they couldn't cover a bet. Accidents happen. Mm. You can bet on it. How much did Bill Regan owe you? Nothing. I told you, I don't know the guy. You don't know him. Sure friendly with a guy you don't know. And then again, maybe not that friendly. Huh? Andy, nice advice to show us all the evidence we need in one neat little package. This isn't evidence. This don't prove anything. Well, it all depends how you present it. This was taken uh, Monday evening, and it makes you the last person to see him alive. If you have anything to say, now might be a good time. OK, so I knew the guy. He was a nice old guy, Gabby, but OK. Whistled the same damn tune every time he walked out the door. So you killed him because he didn't like the tune? I didn't kill anyone. How much did he owe you? <laughs> the guy was a courier, delivery guy. I don't let a guy like that get too deep into me. How much? 200. He goes up and down. He cleans it up, he goes back down again. Hasn't cleaned it up for a while, so I was pissed. But nobody kills anybody over 200 bucks. Oh, yeah? What is the going rate? Listen, the guy comes in to lay a few bets. I told him he wasn't going to play until he paid. And then he told you about the money? Yeah, he said it was his lucky day, and he was coming into some cash. He said he would pay me off the next day in full. And then you got the idea to take him off for his ticket, huh? His ticket? Yeah, his ticket. The lottery ticket, remember? Well, he didn't say anything about a lottery ticket. He said he was coming into some cash. He left, and that was it. Can we let this rest now? The guy didn't know anything about the ticket. Didn't seem to. Why are you doing this? Maybe I got into the job because I used to read mysteries as a kid. <laughs> Guess what? We've got enough real crimes to keep you busy. Think about that. Marinello, Midtown South. The police. What's your name? Oh, I'm Penny. What can I do for you? Well, I'm looking into the death of a courier who made a delivery here a couple of days ago. His name was Bill Regan. Oh, my God, his death? And that woman was just in here asking about him. Right. Well, 
His uh, delivery to this office, you see, was the last of his day. Now, someone in this office might have been the last one to see him alive. Do you uh, remember anything that could help me with my investigation? All I can tell you is what I told her, that maybe the accountant who was here, or... or maybe Mr. Moore might have seen him. Mr. Moore, could you come to the reception, please? Mr. Moore is our office manager. I hope he'll be able to help you. Thank you. Oh, uh, Marinello, Midtown South. It's about that courier that woman was asking about. Yeah, Bill Regan. I'm wondering if, you know, you might have seen him. Uh, I don't know what to say to you, Detective. All I can tell you is uh, what I told Ms. Barkin, that uh, I thought her husband was the only one to talk to him. Her husband? Yeah, Jack Barkin. He's an accountant. He's here doing an audit. I, I didn't see them together, but uh, he went back to where Jack was working, stayed there quite a while. He seemed pretty excited about something. Hmm. Thanks, Mr. Moore. Yeah, sure. Uh, Detective, if you're investigating this, does that mean you think he was murdered? Maybe. But why would someone murder an old man? Penny, that's exactly what I'm trying to figure out. came on, something good always happened. We would get a check in the mail or Evelyn buy a lottery ticket and we win a few bucks. But there was always something good coming up. Nora, it's me, Kristen. Come on, I know you're in there. Open the door. Nora, please open the door. I've been calling and calling. Why are you answering the phone? I'm sorry, Kristen. I, I just want some time to think, okay? Do you mind if we think together? Please? All right, come on in. You want anything? No, no thanks. So? What did Jack say when you told him about what we saw? I didn't ask him. I couldn't do it. Nora, burying your head in the sand isn't going to make this all go away. What did you tell the police? I asked them to investigate Sandra Keel. What about Jack? You did mention Jack. I can't implicate my own husband. Nora, you don't get it. If Jack is involved and you go on withholding information from the police, you become an accessory to murder. We don't know any of this for sure. I've never asked him face to face. But don't I at least owe him that much? Well, if he lied to you before, what's to stop him from doing it again? Oh my God, Kristen. What am I gonna do? I still love him. I know, I know. But if it were me, I'd be telling it to the police first. But they can't do that. Not yet. Good afternoon. Miss Keel? Yes? NYPD. What's the problem? Oh, no problem. I'd just like to ask you a few questions. Actually, I'm kind of busy. It won't take long. We'll be out of your hair before you know it. Let's uh, go inside. I can't imagine why my lottery win would be of any interest to you, Detective. Well, thirteen and a half million dollars always makes for good conversation. It's funny, I never thought of myself as a particularly lucky person before this. I guess people's luck can change. You said you had questions. A few. Um, where did you buy that ticket, Miss Keel? 
I don't know. I usually buy five or six tickets a week anywhere I happen to be in a city. Huh. This ticket was purchased uh, Monday morning. Can you tell me where you were on Monday? Ah, uh, yes. Um, no, I mean, I don't usually keep a log of where I've been. But surely you'd remember where you bought this ticket. A newspaper stand, maybe a convenience store. I said I don't remember. I'm sorry, I don't usually expect to be interrogated. Oh, no, this is not an interrogation, Ms. Giel. You'll know the difference. I won the lottery. You're acting as if I've committed a crime. If you had, $13 million would make one hell of a motive, wouldn't it? A motive? For what? Are you accusing me of something? Have you ever known a man named Bill Regan? No. Why? What about Jack Barkin? I'm starting to think I should have a lawyer before I say anything else. Sometimes lawyers stop people from making deals that'll keep them out of prison. Sometimes it's uh, better for people just to get something off their chest. I'll take my chances with the lawyer. I'm afraid that's all I'm going to say for now. Think about what I said, Miss Keel. You could reach me at this number. to call you. You said this was going to be simple. All I had to do was cash the ticket and there'd be no questions asked. The police, they were just here asking me questions about where and when I bought the ticket. They were not fooling around. No? Well, I don't like this. You better do something about it. Okay, well, think it out and think it out fast. Got going down. She's the guiltiest lottery winner I've ever seen. Hmm. Craziness is contagious, huh? Hey, it's Marinella. What do you have for me? Oh, yeah? Oh, thanks. Listen, leave a copy for me on my desk, will you? That was the coroner's office. The final autopsy results are in. Now, the original examination didn't show any bruising on the outside of the neck. When they went in, they found the fracture of the Adam's apple and the larynx. Yogi's right. It ain't over till it's over. Yeah, more and more, the pieces are starting to make sense. Let's play it out, all right? Now, Bill Regan, he calls Nora, right? and he tells her he's hit the jackpot. He happens to run into her husband an hour later and tells him the good news, too. An hour after that, someone who knows that Bill is going to Nora's for dinner is waiting for him in the park. That someone kills him and takes the ticket. The only problem is, can we establish a connection between Sandra Keel and Jack Barkin? Maybe bring Barkin in and sweat him. If I don't miss my guess, he already knows we've been asking questions. He'll be ready for us. So what? Now, I think the link between Sandra Keel and Jack Barkin is the ticket. Yeah, but now the ticket's cashed. Dead end. Not quite. Now we follow the moolah. dead friend. Would that make you want to satisfy your greed and lust with the squeeze of a trigger? 
You went to my computer? <laughs> yeah, it is quite revealing. Now you're starting to worry me. I'm worrying you? God, that's almost funny. You have used private things that we said to one another. Nora, I'm a writer. I overhear people in the subway. People tell me things in the office. And I think it's just fair that it ends up in my book. Oh, and what have people been telling you in the office lately, hmm? How about Bill? Bill tell you anything interesting? I told you I didn't see Bill for over a month. Just for once, I would like to hear the truth about you, about Bill, and about this damn lottery ticket. You're nuts. I have no idea what you're talking about. Detective Marinello, NYPD. I'm sorry, this is a really bad time. I, the bank is closing, I have an appointment. We won't take up much of your time. Mr. Uh... Igis, I'm the branch manager. No. We're investigating Sandra Keel. You know, the woman that won the uh, Pick 7 lottery this week? I understand this is where she deposited the winnings. That much money raised my bank's profile overnight. Mm. Too bad it was only for a couple of days. What do you mean? Oh, Miss Keel made a transfer this afternoon, almost the whole balance. A transfer? To where? Please, Detective, you must understand, I'm not allowed to give you that information without a warrant. Look, Mr... Uh... Igus. Yeah. The location of that money may be crucial to the outcome of a homicide investigation. Now, if you're worried about the prestige of your bank, you're gonna want to be on record as having cooperated. It was a numbered account at the Bank of the Caymans. I don't know who it was registered to. It might have been her or her gentleman friend. A gentleman friend? Describe him. Talk to my husband if you don't mind. Nora, what are you doing here? Oh, what's the matter, huh? Supposed to work out differently? Like in your book? Nora, this isn't what you think it is. Oh, that's right. You just keep on lying right up to the end. It is so much more consistent. It is so thorough. So you, Jack. What is she talking about? Oh, uh, hi. Um, um, Miss... Uh, anyway, remember me? Yeah. Yeah, I want to speak to Mr. Moore. Oh, I'm sorry. You missed him by a half hour. Where was he going? Uh, he got an emergency call, and he left on a business trip. Said he might be gone a few days. Thanks. Is this about the murder? Hogan, any luck? Yeah, I tried his place, but his wife said he had an emergency business trip. Yeah, same at his office. 
He's not expecting to see him for at least a week. Listen, if he has his way, that's the last anybody will see him. Well, I'll call it in. Alert the airports. Uh, you want to take a ride down to JFK and head it up? No, not yet. Meet me at Sandra Keel's apartment. ASAP. Right. Let me get this straight. You think we're having an affair? Yeah, you're damn right I do. Sandra was referred to me. She wanted advice on handling her winnings. Well, who better to handle them? You gave them to her. I don't know what you're talking about, but he's telling you the truth. Don't even start with me. I just wanted to be sure before I went to the police. The police? I know everything, Jack. I know that you saw Bill that day, and I know that he told you about the lottery ticket. Nora, I told you I didn't see him. I was at the insurance company. There's a record of Bill making a delivery there that day, so why didn't you tell me you'd seen him? Huh? Whoa, whoa, hold it. I was out of the office most of that afternoon. Oh, please. It's true, I was doing inventory at that collision claim center. You can ask Dexter Moore. He's the one who sent me down there. As a matter of fact, he's the one who referred Sandra to me in the first place. I didn't know someone had died. I promise you, I had no idea where the ticket came from. He told me he won the lottery. Who told you? Dexter. We were gonna run away with the money. He said he couldn't cash it in because he'd have to split it with his wife. We had to make it look like I won it. Shut up, Sandra. Back up. Yeah, 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 okay, okay. You should have minded your own damn business. Hey, Dex, you're not gonna get away with this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Everything was gonna be perfect. Back up! All right! Sandra and Dex, off to the Caymans and then on to South America, living happily ever after on $13 million that that uh, simple idiot was just begging me to steal. So you killed him, huh? What are you planning to do with us? The only thing I can do now. Have you gone crazy? Maybe I have. But you helped put me here. You know, you are an expensive commodity, Sandra. How else could I afford you? You can't do this. I won't let you. You're not going to have a lot to say about it, you know. Dex, you don't want to do baby, this. Baby, please. you believed me. Well, I still need you to fill in some of the blanks. Okay. You're not going anywhere, Miss Keel. And you're gonna do some talking right now.
Bill Regan told friends that his last day on this earth was going to be his lucky day. But Bill didn't understand his luck wasn't something flighty. It wasn't something that was there one day and not the next. Bill's luck was to have friends. True friends like Nora Barkin and her husband Jack. And that's a luck that was with him every day of his life. Nora. Well, I simply, Bill Regan was one of the nicest people I ever met. And I know that we're all gonna miss him. And it's hard to come to terms with what happened, but what I like to remember is the best of Bill. <laughs> the little twinkle in his eye, those tunes he'd always whistle. <laughs> but most importantly, the incredible openness and affection he had for everyone he met. <sighs> I am so grateful that I had the pleasure to know him. And um, that at least we all get the chance to say goodbye to him properly. Goodbye, Bill. Thank you. Thank you, Nora. And thank you all for coming. That concludes our service. Are you okay? I'm gonna miss him, though. I know. Well, for what it's worth, he was very lucky to know you. <laughs> There's one thing I have to get straight, though. Did you really think I killed him? Well, I don't know what I thought. <sighs> How did we ever get to the point where you couldn't just ask me? Step by step, Jack. I was unhappy with my life. You were angry, too. I... Well, I guess that's where he started, anyway. You think we can change it? I mean, back the way we were? Yeah, I think we can try. <laughs> oh, boy. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Detective Marinello, what are you doing here? Well, there are some new uh, developments on the case. And after all you've been through and, uh, well, all that you've done for the case, I thought it was important that I tell you in person. Well, is something wrong? It's about the letter. Yeah, we, uh, we managed to retrieve the money that uh, Moore moved offshore. Now, it's all there. I mean, give or take $100,000. What's that got to do with us? Well, it turns out that your friend, Bill Regan, he wrote up a will before he hit the jackpot. And having no family, he listed you two as sole beneficiaries. Hold it. You're saying that money, that $13 million... Is ours? That's what I'm saying. You were very good friends of Bill's. I guess this is his way of telling you what that friendship meant to him. What? Oh, my God. <laughs> That much money? You're kidding, right? The lawyers are on it already. Well, I don't know what to say. Thank you? Well, I think you better thank your friend Bill. I'm just happy I got to be the one to tell you. Working where I do, I don't get a chance to deliver much good news. Wow. And Mrs. Barkin, um, another thing. I just wanted to say, um, when you're trying to get us to investigate your friend's death, I guess, uh, I wasn't a believer. You weren't alone. Well, as an older and wiser cop told me one time, you keep an open mind, you have a better chance of solving the crime. Did he say wiser? I heard him say wiser. <laughs> hey, detective. Thank you. Thanks for believing. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. You will. My God, Jack. That is a lot of money. I still can't believe it. <laughs> oh, wow. Hey, you know, this means I can concentrate on my acting. You don't have to work anymore, except on your novel, of course. Well, I think I might have to work on a different ending, though. <laughs> hey, Bill, I don't know if you can hear me, but thank you. We're going to be thinking of you, and every day is going to be our lucky day. <laughs>